Welcome to our course on project management. My name is Bill Bowen and I'm a project management instructor here in Ottawa, Canada. In this video, I'm going to present a little bit about the course and its assignments. As the course progresses, there will be separate videos that go into detail on each assignment. So let's begin by first defining what is a project. A project is different than an organization's normal day-to-day -day activities. Projects are temporary and unique undertakings that produce specific products, services, or results. Projects occur all the time in business. Consider, for example, how many projects might occur during a product's life cycle. A product's life cycle begins when an organization wants to create something new. They will launch a project to develop this new product. Once the product has been developed, the organization enters into what's called its normal operation phase, where it's producing these products. While initially creating the product would be considered a project, the ongoing mass production of the product would not be considered a project, as it is no longer a unique undertaking. But later on, the product that we've produced might need to be enhanced or upgraded. This requires another temporary and unique endeavor that would be considered a project. Everything that we do that is unique undertaking, including shutting the product line down, would be considered a project and would involve activities that are very different from the organization's normal operations. So project management is very much about dealing with those unique situations that an organization encounters. So how do we deal with these unique undertakings? That is what this course is all about. This course is based on the project management best practices as described in the 5th and 6th edition of the Project Management Body of Knowledge, also known as the PIMBOK Guide. The assignments presented in this course will allow you to draw upon these industry best practices and demonstrate your knowledge by developing project management related documents. The nice thing about this guide is that it offers a common project management framework that can be used across all industries. So while this course might focus on construction related projects, the concepts, tools, and techniques that you learn in this course can apply to any industry that you find yourself in. The same tools that are used to plan out a construction project are also used in IT projects, research projects, event hosting projects, or any other field. The guide offers a collection of best practices. Once you know those practices, you can tailor them to fit any particular project. There are a lot of different knowledge areas in the PIMBOK. The PIMBOK guide draws its best practices from many different industries and organizes them all in one book. Much of what you will learn in the PIMBOK is not unique to project management, but all of it has been found to be useful on projects. Let me pause here for a second and give you a word of caution about the PIMBOK. This book is a guide. It is not a textbook. It was never intended to be read cover to cover as if it was a novel. Instead, it is to be used similarly to how you would use a dictionary. If you come across a word, a phrase, or a concept that you're not familiar with, you would look it up in the dictionary. Similarly, if there are project management terms, concepts, or tools that you are not familiar with, then you would look them up in the PIMBOK. The PIMBOK may not give as complete an explanation as you would like. After all, it's only a guide. The job of the guide is to put you on the right track. Additional online research can be done as needed. So how would that work? Suppose you wanted to know more about the term requirements and how they are used on projects. After consulting section 5.2 of the guide, you would find that in project management we use the term requirements no less than six different ways. Section 5.2 only provides a brief description of each of the six types of requirements, but now you know the names of the different types of requirements and you can do some follow-on research if needed to find out more. In our assignment, you will find specific PIMBOK section references in each of the assignment sections. These PIMBOK references are only intended to be a starting point. If more information is needed, then an online search is always available. Of course, you can also email me any questions that you have, and I'll provide whatever guidance I can. I can also reference some really good project management textbooks that you can find at your local library, or we can meet online to have a discussion on specific concepts and topics. So what will you find in this course? The simple answer is a whole lot of information about different project management knowledge areas. But more importantly, this course presents a logical approach for how to conduct projects. It is this understanding of the overall approach and its associated processes and knowledge areas that will allow you to be effective in conducting a wide range of projects, even in business areas that you're not familiar with. So as a project manager, 
When planning your project or communicating with stakeholders, you will know what information you will need to gather and how it is to be used within the project's life cycle. This will allow you to be able to effectively recognize and utilize valuable data while not being overwhelmed by the often excessive details that can be associated with a project. As you can see, this course is tightly linked to the PMBOK guide. I am often asked if the PMBOK is used everywhere in the world. It is the preferred standard for much of the world, and is certainly the preferred standard here in North America. However, other standards do exist, and they do contain good information. While difficult to find in Canada, if you get an opportunity to review one of the other standards, I do encourage you to read them, as they certainly contain a different perspective and insight into project management. However, in Canada, you will find that it is the PMBOK guide that is used everywhere. Whether working on government projects or working in the private sector, you will find that knowledge of these industry best practices is preferred. This course uses assignments that reflect the templates that are used widely through industry. The assignments are usually a combination of the project management standards called for by the Treasury Board Secretariat of Canada, the PMBOK specific information requirements, and learning objectives that were inserted to give you opportunities to demonstrate your specific knowledge of topics and concepts. So let's look at these upcoming assignments. You will be producing a project charter as part of this course. While each of the assignments that you will encounter in this course is independent, they all share a common theme of building your dream home. Why a dream home? Because it's fun, something we can all relate to, and it's a great platform for demonstrating all of the required project management concepts, tools, and techniques. Don't worry, to be successful in this course, you do not need to be an expert in house construction. In this project charter assignment, you will take on the role of a project sponsor to create a project charter so that the project can be initiated. There is information in project charters in the PMBOK, the online notes, and a supplemental video that provides a nice walkthrough of the assignment will be popping up in the announcement section as we get closer to the assignment's due date. Our next assignment is developing the project plan. In this assignment, we assume that the project has been initiated and the planning process has begun. Usually, the project manager takes the lead in the planning activities. Sometimes they are supported by the project team, but often the project team has not yet been assembled at this part of the project's life cycle, and it is the project manager who needs to take the lead on this activity. This assignment is by far the most complex of all the assignments in this course, simply due to the number of different knowledge areas that needs to be studied to be able to complete the plan. The assignment has PMBOK references as a starting point in each section, and additional information is available in the online notes. Also, keep an eye on the announcement section of the course as a walkthrough video that offers specific guidance on each section of the assignment will be popping up. A status report will be our final assignment in this course. In this assignment, you can assume that we have successfully initiated a project, planned it out, and it is now being executed. The project is ongoing and the customer wants a status report produced. While this assignment is shorter than the previous one, it focuses on earned value management, which is a mathematical formula-driven system to determine progress on a project. As always, lots of supporting information exists. References to the PMBOK have been included in the assignment, there are online lesson notes, and there will be a video walkthrough as always. That is our quick introduction to the course. If you need to reach me, the best method is direct email. You can find my email address in the course announcement section and in the course instructor background section. I wish everyone success in this course, and I look forward to providing useful and beneficial feedback in all of your assignments.